got some good landing gear on it. Just to take off on the landing gear. Hey guys, Rich here at rcinformer.com. Thanks for checking out this video on the uh, StarMax F18. Uh, this video is going to show a much needed improvement uh, to the landing gear in addition to what I did in the last video, and that is moving the center of gravity or moving the landing gear closer to the center of gravity. Uh, as you can see right here, the CG on the airplane is in this position, and you can see where the old landing gear, which is the farther one, was really at about five and, inch, five, five and a half inches back from the center of gravity, which made rotation really tough. And this, this, this plane was really notorious for having that problem. What I did was, is I moved it forward. I was able to get it forward about two inches, which uh, makes the rotation uh, much, much better. Makes the plane much easier to take off. Um, you have to be careful. You, I could only move the landing gear so far forward before you start getting into the duct because there's not a whole lot of uh, material uh, in here because, the, as you know, the, the, the intake starts thin. It gets a little thicker here. I, what I did is I moved the gear as far forward as I could um, without, so it wouldn't protrude um, into the intake. Now let's take a look at some of the parts uh, I'm going to use in this thing. Uh, notice I switched over to a, a Change Sun brand of Retract. Uh, this is the RC Lander one that I had in there and I actually prefer it. Uh, this is the metal plate I made for it and you can see this all in the last video. But it's very deep. It's well over an inch, inch and a half or so deep. And uh, in order to get uh, this gear unit as far forward as I could without protruding into the intake, I needed something a little narrower. And what I found was, is uh, this Change Sun unit is uh, very thin. It's much, much thinner and has a much lower profile uh, than, the, uh, than the landing gear. And let's take a look at it. You can see uh, it doesn't go down nearly as deep. It, uh, you save uh, quite a bit of space there. Also, you know, I was able to trim a little bit off the bottom and allow just a little more clearance so I could inch this or so I could edge this landing gear far forward as I could again without uh, uh, going into the uh, intake unit. Also the nice thing about this change sun unit is it has a, um, uh, a metal trunnion in it which is real nice. So uh, I know that uh, Exceed RC and Starmax use these on a lot of their airplanes so it'll definitely take the weight and um, uh, it definitely is a good gear. It's a little bit more expensive. It's about ten dollars as opposed to seven but that's pretty nominal. Uh, for, uh, for, for a plane like this. Um, the other parts that you're going to need uh, that I used uh, was a little, some scraps of plywood. Uh, I used one quarter inch uh, uh, ply, not the light ply, but the heavy stuff. Uh, I just figured uh, because everything's going to be landing on this, and we're gonna, all the landing load is going to be on this, that uh, I wanted something rigid and I made it very long uh, so it would uh, transfer some of the load to the, to the back part of the uh, landing gear well. So. Uh, I'll give you the dimensions for all these things later on. You'll also need some 1 16th ply that you're going to cut into this shape. If anybody wants the patterns for these or, or whatever, just let me know and I can probably uh, somehow send one to you or something. But if you just follow it as a guide, it's pretty easy to, to just kind of cut this out. It uh, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be exact, but both of these are a little bit different in shape uh, at the back end. And then a little piece of uh, quarter inch uh, light ply and that's going to connect to the back. All these parts are going to go together and make basically a box. Uh, that's going to, you're going to assemble and it's going to get glued right down into this well. You're going to cut a notch and it's all going to go into place there. Um, because the foam is very thin up here, okay, the air intake is uh, right along here, so there's not a lot of space between the wood and where the foam starts, and obviously we don't want that to punch through. What I did was, is I took, I used one of the spars for some port. And if you look at the wing, you have one spar running through here and one spar running through here, and they go into the intake. So what I did was I ran a piece of rod, and this is the last piece you're going to need. I ran a piece of uh, rod of uh, carbon fiber rod from here all the way up to here. So uh, by taking a small piece of carbon rod or fiberglass or whatever you want, I actually dug a hole into the top 
and it actually runs right through here. So again, you can't see it, but you're going to drill a hole. I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to drill a hole through here, and it's going to run down, and it's going to contact that spar, and now you're going to have some, some landing support. So any impact, any downward impact or upward impact on the landing gear will transfer down to that rod that runs through and now it has something hard to hit on like the spar so it's not just uh, foam, you're not just relying on foam to support this anyway on with the building guys I'll show you how this, all this goes together to start off you're just going to unplug your retract unit or whatever you have in here or if you have a new kit which is really a good way to go if you have the new kit then they don't even glue these things into place but this plastic piece you're going to pull out because that's all going to be removed um, the way to get that out, uh, it's just really hot glued in place, and you can see here's the, uh, here's the uh, old one that I, I pulled out from the other side. They just kind of stuck some hot glue on there to get it in there. It was actually in there pretty strong, and it was actually kind of difficult to get out. But you're really just going to take a razor knife of some kind. I'm using a razor knife blade here. You can use a, a hobby knife or whatever, and you can just really just push it down in there and very carefully just kind of cut around it. You're going to end up removing a lot of foam here anyway, so it doesn't have to really be a super nice job but just kind of cut around it you know put your knife in here or wherever you need to just to kind of carve and get this whole thing out of there now that you got your plastic wheel well uh, removed you can just take it out and uh, discard it uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, remove any tape that's holding uh, the aileron wire in place and you're going to go ahead and uh, just remove it from that trench and just sort of put it aside uh, then you're going to take your uh, gear plate, uh, which is, uh, again, thick plywood, uh, one quarter inch. Uh, and I cut mine to 170 millimeters uh, long by 39 millimeters wide. And then I used a bandsaw and some sanding bars and stuff uh, just to cut the, uh, cut the trench or the slot uh, to fit the, uh, the change sun retract unit. And uh, that'll fit in there just like that uh, as we go along. But anyway, we're going to take uh, the top plate using the existing uh, uh, factory mark here where the, the old retractor, where the back of it was, you're going to sort of line that up with it and put this thing down and you're going to make sure it looks like it's about the same as the other one. And then taking a hobby knife, you're going to very carefully just cut along the edge here down into the foam and then remove this and you'll have a mark. And you're going to cut down into the foam and you're going to countersink this down. And you want to make sure you countersink it at the angle that it was at so the landing gear is kind of sticking out a little bit and when you view the airplane from the front the retracts obviously they kind of angle down a little bit and you just sort of eyeball that uh, so you get the correct angle on the gear once you cut into your foam guys you can see how relatively easy it is just to take your knife and sort of chip this away and the foam comes out right along the line that you cut and you can see this really just takes a couple of minutes just to sort of get this all cleared away where you cut your lines everything's going to come out nice and neat once you removed enough of the foam uh, now you can go ahead and uh, uh, constantly keep test fitting uh, your uh, gear uh, plate and see if it uh, make sure it fits in there you're going to be looking to make sure that it's the same as the other one and uh, you're going to need to cut with a hobby knife uh, you're going to want to cut right along this edge okay to get uh, the inside part cut as well uh, for the mechanism to fit in there. Now, you notice on the mechanism, I've, I've actually removed quite a bit of material, or not quite a bit, but a little bit of material from one side because uh, otherwise it'll protrude uh, into the uh, uh, intake, into the scoop. So, and you notice right here, it does get a little thin on one side, and uh, that's okay. We're going to put a piece of tape on the inside when we epoxy this thing and uh, you're going to expect it to get a little bit thin. This is the reason why I could not um, uh, move any farther forward with the gear, and that's the reason why I use this one that has a thinner profile, so I could get the gear as far forward as I could. But anyway, this was as far as forward as I could get it uh, without it uh, really sticking out into the uh, intake. One thing you're going to want to check here, guys, is to make sure you have the exact same angle or close enough, as close you can get it on, uh, on both of these struts. So what I did is using the bottom of the fuselage and a, uh, and a square here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put, the, put my square down on the same points. And uh, with the side that's already glued in, which is this one, uh, what I'm going to do is check the angle uh, and the distance from this point to here. So I have roughly the same angle here as I do on that side. Now when I measure this out, the angle looks the same and the distance looks like it's about one uh, centimeter uh, when I measured it. And I'm using just a straight three millimeter scrap rod that I had sitting around. Same thing on the other side, you'll go ahead and flip this around 
and uh, with your plate uh, as far down as you can get it and you line uh, your square up on the same points on the fuselage, same thing. Make sure you have about the same angle here and the same distance from here to here. Then you know that you have the exact same angle, the same rake on both of these uh, struts. Another thing you want to look for is to make sure that uh, your wheel and your strut are going to be buried far enough into the well. And you can see they do stick out a tiny bit. Uh, same thing as the, uh, as the uh, spring loop, it's going to stick out just a little bit. Uh, but notice here the way the plate is mounted, uh, it's, uh, it's deeper into the fuselage at the back end than it is in the front. In the front it's barely even in there. So um, you want to make sure that you do have it enough that uh, you know as you fly the airplane uh, the strut is going to bend a little bit and it's going to bend back. But uh, you know the, the fuselage has a little bit of a curve to it and you can see from the other strut it pretty much sticks straight down. So if you were to keep this thing flush with the surface your strut is going to bend forward and your gear, wheel and gear is not going to um, completely not going to get down in there far enough. So anyway you can see it sticks out a little bit but as, as the gear bends back a little bit from taking off and landing a tiny bit, uh, it'll, it'll be able to seat further down in there. So anyway, again, big deal is make sure you have enough space. You have more space here than you do in the front. Looking at this thing from the other side, you can see pretty much the same thing. It's deeper on this side, obviously, because it's, uh, the wheel is uh, the struts angled outward a bit. But you can see it's not nearly as, sh it's a little shallower here and much deeper on the back end. And, uh, you know, if you get down low, you can see that almost the whole wheel, almost everything tucks down under there. So, uh, anyway, that's just how it looks from this side. Another thing you want to check for with everything seated fully down is enough clearance for the wheel. Uh, there's plenty of foam in there because the fan unit is right around in this area. So, But you want to make sure there's enough uh, clearance for the wheel. And you can see uh, I cut out quite a bit in there to fit. And uh, there's plenty of room to go uh, deeper down in there if you need to. But uh, And as you get this all glued in and stuff, you may need to clear a little bit more away. But, uh, but you need to do an initial uh, uh, clearing out of all that just to make sure everything's going to fit uh, down in there nicely. The next thing you want to do is glue your uh, lower bulkheads on. Um, if anybody needs the pattern, you can uh, contact me and I'll, uh, I'll send them to you. But, uh, you know, this one's about 13 uh, centimeters long by uh, about 20 centimeters deep or 20 millimeters deep. Uh, and uh, almost the same thing on this, about 20 deep. And uh, let's look at the length. It's a little longer on this one. It's about 14 or so. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. But uh, anyway, you're just going to glue these on so it's... Uh, so it's flush on this edge here and this edge too. Uh, this lower piece you just use sort of as a spacer as you're gluing it together and uh, it's actually going to get glued in after the fact. And what you're going to do is, as you can see from the wheel well here, you're going to insert this in here and you're going to have to cut away a little more to, to match all this. And you're going to get this to all fit down where you had it before. And then when, just as you're gluing it, you're going to go ahead and insert this piece all the way down into the bottom. And that will kind of tie everything together. And uh, I'll show you that here in, uh, in a couple of the clips coming up. In addition to gluing this thing together, I also added um, some reinforcements here and here uh, that will actually allow for um, uh, more threads when I uh, drill the, the holes for the landing gear. Uh, I also put two triangle braces uh, right here of hardwood. Uh, and the idea is, is we're taking advantage of the, um, the sheer strength of these two side pieces of wood uh, in addition to you know, the strength of this uh, quarter inch wood. So uh, this will help keep this uh, glued on because the you know, landing load is going to be on this part and it's going to be kind of tw maybe twisting this whole thing a little bit and it'll keep the whole thing rigid uh, and, uh, and assembled. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this thing, uh, put it down in its place. And uh, you're going to trim out uh, a little extra foam to, uh, to make up for those uh, new pieces that you put on. Here's pretty much the uh, completed foam area all kind of excavated out. And you can see it pretty much is a, a mirror image of, um, of what the, uh, the wood uh, uh, support looks like. And you can see we're just going to put it right in there. And it should fit perfectly right in there just the way you want it. Next thing we're going to go ahead and put in the carbon fiber rod. Before gluing this all into position, there's just one more part we're going to make. Uh, I used a carbon fiber rod. You can use a fiberglass or whatever you want. You can see on this end I filed a, um, a curved surface in it. Uh, I just put some sandpaper on a, uh, on a uh, fiberglass rod or a brass rod or something. And you just kind of say it with the, with the sandpaper pointing outward obviously. Uh, and you just kind of sand this along there, you can get a nice curved edge on here. Uh, this side just has an angled uh, edge that uh, will actually fit 
uh, inside uh, this corner here. And what I did was, is I took to, it, it, the problem is, is that the, the, the foam is so thin here, guys, there's really not a lot of support for the landing gear, you know, during the impact, you know, when you land and so forth. Um, but uh, what I did was, is I put a little hole in here, and you can see down in there, I channeled a hole through there. What I did is I took uh, a drill bit, and I have this uh, extra long drill bit, and I went ahead and angled it down in, and uh, drilled a hole in here, and you've got about uh, three quarters of an inch or so to work with here. And um, uh, what you're trying to do here is get that, get the hole to go right down to where the wing spar is. And uh, for anyone that knows the airplane, there's a wing spar right here, and there's a wing spar right here, and they both go through the uh, intakes. And uh, what you're going to do is um, is drill this hole right here. So um, it goes down into, and here it is right here. Let's see if I can focus on that. It goes down into right where that spar is, okay? And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take the curved surface of the carbon rod and we want it to contact that uh, fiberglass spar in there. So the gear plate up here has some good support. So, once we drill the hole in there, we've made it big enough, what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and take this uh, carbon rod with the uh, angled end up top, and we're going to insert this down in here. Let's see if I can get this to zoom right. And uh, what we're going to see is we're going to see that round surface of the carbon rod mate perfectly on that fiberglass rod. Okay, and once that's on there on that fiberglass rod, we now have some structure, okay, to support the, um, the uh, gear plate uh, up here at the top. So um, what will happen is, is that corner, that fiberglass rod will contact, uh, or that carbon fiber rod will contact this corner right here. And you notice where I put it right there. So what will happen is, is we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll just put the gear plate. We're going to glue all this in together at one time. And now any impact load, any landing load that we have on this gear plate is actually going to be transferred down through that carbon fiber rod to the main spar. So now we have the main wing spar helping to support um, uh, the landing gear. So now we have something tough there that's supporting the landing loads and hopefully this thing uh, it'll help keep it from collapsing in there and so forth. Here's a shot of the three parts, main parts, before gluing everything into position. Uh, again, you have the main bracket that we have all um, glued together and trimmed, ready to go in. Uh, we've got this little kind of top plate that's going to, or bottom plate that's going to connect these two together. And we've got the carbon fiber rod. Uh, you want to make sure you sand any of the painted surfaces where the epoxy is going to go. Uh, and we're going to mix about uh, six drams together, and you're going to use quite a bit of it. Um, uh, to fill in any of the gaps and so forth in here. Um, uh, also, uh, this little spot where we opened up a hole uh, where the main spar runs, we want to put a piece of uh, tape here to keep the, the epoxy from just flowing out because we're going to glue this all in. Also, this corner here, which is really thin right here, and that's pretty normal. Uh, you're going to want to put uh, scotch tape on the inside of the tube, okay? So when we put epoxy all in here, it's not going to drain and dribble down in there. And we're also going to put tape on the opposite side of this spar on the inside of the intake. So you're going to have a piece here and a piece here on the inside of the intake, as well as this outside piece to keep all the epoxy from going into the intake and pouring out here. Um, the way we're going to glue this in, uh, again, we're going to mix about uh, six drams of 30-minute epoxy. Um, and what we're going to do is first stuff it down into this hole. First, first start putting uh, epoxy down into that hole. Uh, I did this on the other side, and it worked really well. So, uh, And then, uh, of course, get some on the, uh, on the carbon fiber rod. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, just, uh, once we get the epoxy in there, we're going to insert the carbon fiber rod all the way down into where, where it's supposed to go. Uh, and then it'll be nice and epoxied. We're going to see epoxy fill up, okay, on this piece of tape, and we're going to see that there's uh, plenty of epoxy in there to bond everything together. Um, then with a paintbrush, okay, we're going to go ahead and brush the 30-minute epoxy all on this whole area. And uh, same thing with this. We're going to brush the whole underside of this thing and just get it on there real quick. 
and then with epoxy all over here everywhere where we need it to go and all the crevices and so forth we'll go ahead and insert this in position and uh, we, we want to have plenty of epoxy on there and it should be oozing out and you want to have your alcohol and towels there so you can kind of clean it up um, and then with plenty of epoxy down in here uh, you're going to right away pretty much take uh, this little block here that kind of separates everything and with the you know with the epoxy all wet and everything you're just going to push this all down into there and uh, and then you can pretty much uh, clean the thing up now uh, you want to make sure you have plenty of epoxy in this notch and I filled this entire gap with epoxy so it bonds to that wall so you want to make sure you do use plenty of epoxy on this whole thing and uh, anyway and that's it just make sure it's in place uh, clean up the remainder of the epoxy and then just let the thing dry all right guys here's the uh, finished uh, retract uh, plate all put into position uh, it went in really nice and smoothly just like the other side uh, went in you notice here at the back a couple of things uh, I put a lot of epoxy in here and remember I mixed six drams so I had lots of epoxy to use and uh, I pretty much used all of it but I used a lot here just to bond uh, the side of the uh, sidewall of the foam here to this uh, long bulkhead to support the whole thing. Uh, you notice the retract wire, I just sort of rerouted down here. You can, I taped it to the side here. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, the, the servo connector for it, I just used some uh, uh, contact cement to get that thing, uh, just to stick that on there. And you can move it or put it wherever you want. Notice on the other side, you just have to clear whatever foam that you need uh, away to get the uh, wheel. Uh, and the uh, axle and everything to go in there nicely so you just kind of trim what you need to do. Uh, notice here at the bottom uh, there is uh, really just a thin layer of epoxy. Yeah, let me focus that. Uh, there's not really too much down in there. Remember you don't want to have a lot in there. You clear that away with alcohol. Get as much out of there as you can uh, because the gear is a pretty tight fit. The four holes, uh, I use uh, the Great Plains uh, dead center tool which is like really the best thing for getting screws right in the center and then I just screwed these in pretty much with just uh, regular hardware screws. Guys, you can use whatever you want for this but uh, this is just something I had laying around and uh, they fit into the, uh, uh, the beveled edge fits into the recess nicely. Uh, also notice that the, uh, uh, the actual uh, aileron servo wire, you know, we obviously went and cut through that so I just had to go around it. So just using a straight edge and using a hobby knife, knife, you can cut a nice trench uh, however you need to. You can route it elsewhere if you want to, but this seemed to be the easiest way just to route it right around. There seemed to be plenty of wire here that I could pull through because it does need to be a little bit longer. But uh, anyway, there it is, guys, uh, all finished and glued into position. Here's a look at the retract fully installed. All you got to do is just uh, install the connector and uh, put your four screws in and uh, you're good to go. Uh, one thing I did differently from here, uh, from the last video that I made of uh, showing you how to make the grass landing gear, is I switched over to a double wire loop and that just helps prevent the gear from bending. I noticed mine was bending a little bit. I also put this little, uh, this little bend in here guys, um, which is a, uh, uh, to basically turns this off-centered or offset rod into basically a straight rod again, but it still keeps the loops. This is an E-Flight brand, uh, it's their 10 to 15 size uh, retract uh, three millimeter strut. You could even upgrade it to a three and a half if you wanted to and uh, just drill this out to three and a half and drill that out to three and a half and uh, and you're gonna and you'll be good to go. Uh, let's take a look at this thing in operation now. All right, you see it goes in there nicely. All you have to do is trim away uh, whatever material you need to get everything to fit. Uh, and you can also tell that because the gear is a whole lot shorter, we can cover this hole up now. So uh, what I'm gonna do is go out and test fly this thing now, guys, and uh, uh, make sure everything's working okay and then when I get it back into the shop I'm gonna cover all these holes this thing probably makes a tremendous amount of drag so I'm gonna cover this with some foam cover this with some foam too I'll probably cover this up cover this up uh, and then run tape along all the wires make sure everything's covered up and then uh, just use my airbrush and uh, and uh, paint this up uh, and then it'll look uh, really nice when it's all done but for now I'm gonna run out and test fly it and see how everything works let's take a look at extending it all right, and you can see everything works real nicely. After doing some test flying with the airplane with uh, really good success, I found that uh, I needed to reduce uh, the length of the uh, landing gear. So uh, by reducing the length from the bottom of the retract uh, up to the, uh, where the, uh, the gear strut itself starts, um, it, it actually uh, made the airplane take off much, much better. The critical number that you need here is uh, 23 millimeters from the uh, base of the retract unit right here. Uh, up to where the uh, strut begins. And what that does is it'll give the airplane a slight positive angle of attack on the runway and uh, helps the airplane to rotate uh, much, much better. Uh, now you can also notice what I did is I cleaned up the other underside of the airplane. 
uh, all of the uh, channels uh, where any of the uh, wires went around. Uh, I went ahead and covered with uh, scotch tape. Uh, I filled in the other areas uh, with foam. Uh, did some light sanding and uh, just painted it with an airbrush. And you can see it's a real clean look. The, uh, the next couple of frames here, I'll show you how I exactly I did that. Here you can see the front part where the landing gear plates are, uh, just about uh, done and kind of sanded down into place. And uh, the rear section, uh, I went ahead and covered up the old uh, uh, hole for the, for the old wheel well where that used to be. The new one is kind of right in here. So uh, I just filled it up with some foam scraps. You can see you just pretty much use anything you have just to plug up the holes. CA everything in place. I put a few blocks in here too and um, uh, just CA them in place, let it dry thoroughly, uh, and then you can get out your sanding blocks and so forth. And uh, you can pretty much just kind of sand that down and use, uh, use the uh, bars to round everything and just really just use whatever uh, tools you have to round it and, uh, and uh, get it uh, to look like a nice, uh, nice shape. Here's the filled in, cleaned up uh, landing gear well area. You see we uh, filled the uh, old landing gear well area here with uh, some foam and just kind of shaped it to match. Uh, same with all this forward section. I uh, used a little bit of CA on the surface of it uh, to, uh, uh, to allow the foam to absorb it and give it sort of an exterior shell and sanded it a little bit. Uh, and now it's uh, pretty much ready uh, just for some airbrushing. All right, here's a shot of the finished uh, wheel well. And uh, you can see how it looks compared to the other one that I just haven't painted yet. but. Uh, you can see how just a little bit of airbrushing goes a long way and really cleans up the airplane. Here's the finished underside of the airplane. As you can see, it, uh, as long as you airbrush it, it pretty much all the, all the sanding and everything you did and all the, all the, the ugly spots pretty much disappear, guys. Uh, the paint that I used was uh, Sky Gray uh, XF19. I uh, just used my uh, Hobby King airbrush that cost me 20 bucks and a $40 compressor I got from Harbor Freight Tools. And you can see the underside of this airplane uh, looks uh, really nice. Let's go ahead and uh, check out the gear again in operation. Nice and clean, guys. As you can see, this fits in there nicely. The drag of those old, ugly holes back here is pretty much gone. And uh, you got a nice, clean, clean underside of the airplane now with uh, landing gear that works. All right, guys. Um, uh, this concludes this video on, uh, in, uh, on moving this landing gear forward. Again, it's about two inches farther forward than the stock gear and it greatly helps uh, uh, get this airplane up in the air sooner. It makes the rotation much, much easier. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. Uh, please subscribe to uh, RC Informer and check out rcinformer.com. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.